insight from participants and landmark releases from the Clean, Tall Dwarves, the Chills, the Villains, the Bats, and many more. Extended play every Sunday, 11 a.m. on 95BFM. The public, let me tell you, like public executions. I went to Cambridge University, Charles. I'm a serious fucking journalist living in one of the most important fucking times of human history. The Wire. You're on 95 BFM. It's just gone 21 past 12. Now, this week on uh, Counterclockwise with uh, Selwyn Manning, we're actually uh, talking about a couple of issues. Uh, basically, the return of the three slain soldiers from Afghanistan and asset sales. Now, there's an interesting psychological term. It's called sunk loss cost. It means that you've invested so much into a situation, you just can't back out anymore. Selwyn, how do you think that applies to these two topics? Yeah, um, especially with the one on Afghanistan, it certainly does. I mean, there's multiple um, personal interests and, and uh, political interests involved as well that overly complicates this whole situation. At the end of the day, though, Simon, I think John Key is starting to actually realise he has a, a moral decision to make here. Um, and it falls back on, I think, um, two things. Should John Key pull Kiwis out of Afghanistan and save Kiwi lives? Or should he decide to continue to deploy our young people to this northern hemisphere conflict, knowing that some of them will be in all likelihood be killed? Um, and that, that, that it will come down to that. He's fast getting put into a political position where he's having to consider those two things. If we look at um, News Talk ZB, it did quite a reasonable um, uh, report on this whole issue um, a couple of days ago. Um, and it quoted John Stevenson, you know, investigative journalist who's up in Kabul and has been there all year. Um, reporting for McClatchy's uh, US uh, agency up there. Now, John spoke to me on the phone the other night um, from Kabul, and he, he confirmed that his quote still stood, you know, of what he said to News Talk ZB. And the quote was, um, they, meaning John Key and the Defence Minister, Jonathan Coleman, don't understand war. They don't know when it's what it's like when a vehicle is hit by a massive bomb. They don't know what it's like to see people shot. And these people, meaning the politicians, are making decisions that affect others and are putting other people in harm's now way. Now, that was his line, and you can see what he was trying to do was to frame it in human terms. Now, that's an interesting um issue there. I mean, this actually goes, I think probably the, the most notable example this is probably uh, the US President Johnson uh, during the yeah. Vietnam War had a, a very uh, complicated involvement with that war. But in Afghanistan we've got the situation where after the first two uh, service people died uh, that they, I believe they actually escalated their military activity in that region and then of course we had these three deaths What's, are, is it going to be sort of a confined to barracks nature for the troops if they stay in Afghanistan now? Well, that's one of the things that's been proposed by a former minister in the Afghanistan government who's based in Otago. Um, his proposition in the New Zealand Herald, if people want to have a look there, was that New Zealand, if it was going to stay there, should contain itself and defend itself. Um, that's an interesting kind of line. You know, that's one of the things perhaps that those on the ground and those in defence circles would know best to kind of comment on. Um, what we do know, though, is that there is a pattern, and, and you know, Simon, you and I even from this distance discussed these patterns of uh, increasing hostility some time ago. I think it was a few weeks ago, or maybe it was a couple of weeks ago when um, the first two bodies were being returned to New Zealand. Um, for, you know, that, that, that occurred um, earlier this month. But what, what comes out of this is clearly pictures where, um, if you look at um, the NATO spokesperson, um, Major Adam Wojak. Um, now his quote in the New Zealand Herald, oh, sorry, in the uh, uh, the News Talk ZB article, it, it says, and I'll quote here: "We think it's just too early to tell if Bamiyan, meaning Bamiyan Province, where our people are." Uh, there is headed toward troubles but those those fatal attacks on New Zealand soldiers are definitely indicators of something so, uh, you know NATO is kind of indicating that something's going wrong as far as the definition of exactly what's going on um, they're not it's a bit premature but the Herald this morning in an AP report that it republished it was showing that if you look at U US service members dying in Afghanistan 40 in, in July were killed and it said that it was the deadliest month for American troops. Yes. Um, this year. 
Um, and just in one other part, it was saying 31 have already been killed this month, and it's saying 10 others were gunned down in, um, in attacks by members of the Afghan security forces, and it said they were either disgruntled turncoats or Taliban infiltrators. Now, these are indicators that things have gone very, very wrong. Remember that our troops are up there supposedly in a position where they are rebuilding and reconstructing and drilling you know, wells and, and aiding the infrastructure to development. They're not there at the moment to actually fight this war. So that's a strong premise for John Key to say, come real with the John, uh, the, you know, a strong point to the John Key, our Prime Minister, to say, get real with the New Zealand public. If they cannot do their job in a manner that's satisfactory to New Zealand's ethos, then get them home sooner rather than later. Given the nature of uh, guerrilla war, uh, mm. where you squeeze in one place and it pops up in another, it seems yeah. what's happening in Bam and Yan, uh, Afghanistan is becoming a much more violent place again. Uh, I read a statistic where I think in the last 36 months of the war, uh, US casualties have in fact doubled. Uh, mm. So it, it doesn't. It looks like it's there's no chance of it. It's going to be dying down soon. Um, what do you think the uh, Defence Force members think about staying? That's a really difficult one to kind of interpret. What we can see is, is that they have got an instruction from the Prime Minister and the Defence Minister that they must be there. So therefore their job operationally is to actually meet those objectives, to do what they're sent there to do, meaning reconstruction at the moment. So from their point of view, you can see that they're trying to do their best job to, one, protect their people on the ground over there and actually meet what the government is telling them they must do. So in some ways, <clears throat> their advice back to the government is in that term. It might not be um, a, a situation where John Key is getting advice on the issues of morality or clear um, thought relating to New Zealand's position in a foreign um, defence situation. Remember that New Zealand has had a now uh, up until this this um, skirmish, this conflict, a long history in recent, you know, in, in our de in our generations of peacekeeping within our region and and further abroad too. That was the culture that defence um, had had grown to actually pride itself in. And I know travelling up to Northern Hemisphere on Air Force planes at different you know, uh, journalism assignments over the years. The Kiwi grunts on those planes were really proud of the peacekeeping roles. More, the most I ever saw in evidence was when I was up in um, uh, in, in Bahrain, um, and the Kiwi soldiers had a couple of nights where they could, you know, socialise in, in the bar kind of thing. There were Americans at that time, this is the mid-2000s, who were down from Afghanistan on, uh, sorry, from Iraq on R&R, &R, and a fight broke out basically over this fact that the New Zealand Kiwis said, we're the ones who make peace, you're the ones who break it. And, and you know, that, that was a, a culture that I observed um, when that fight took off. And I kind of thought, well... I kind of felt quite proud to be a Kiwi at that time, to be honest. So with you. you don't think there's much, um, forgive me for the vulgar turn of phrase, there's not much appetite for trigger time uh, in terms yeah. of our, our soldiers don't want to go there to have a fight. I, I couldn't answer for our soldiers. But what I, I just gave that is an illustration of the culture mm. that had developed from um, from Timor, from Solomon Islands, where there was efforts to actually restore peace. Up there in Afghanistan, we are fighting someone else's war. Um, and we're supposed to be there in a reconstruction um, uh, responsibility. And clearly the, the areas of perimeters of our engagement have been blurred over the time. The New Zealand public has not been trusted um, to be able to be privy to that information. Right, well now moving on, uh, of course uh, it's decision time for the government about Afghanistan, but it's also decision time regarding state asset sales, and we have Absolutely. seen a shift in the government's stance there, Selwyn. Uh, how does this order for the government? Well, I think the government's in a, in a, in a tricky situation here. Um, it's got a couple of decisions that it's indicated that it's going to actually make in the next month. Um, those being whether or not it's going to go ahead with the Mighty River Power sale. Um, now, of course, remember that Mighty River Power, that, that sale of that partial asset, uh, sorry, partial sale of that state asset is, is tied up in the complexities relating to the Māori Council challenge to the Waitangi Tribunal over water ownership. Now, that decision, the government is expecting to make a decision one way or another in September, and that's the indication there. But what we've seen in the last two days is solid energy... 
another one of the state-owned enterprises um, that the government was putting on the books to sell. Um, We've seen that coal commodity prices have collapsed um, globally, and that is put big question marks over should solid energy be sold in its current form. Now, both John Key, the Prime Minister, and Bill English, the Finance Minister, have obviously put big question marks around that. John Key is indicating that it may not even be in this term when they roll that particular one out for sale. So how does this uh, affect their budget then? There's a lot of things they want to do that depend on uh, selling up. Uh, Exactly. It's going to leave them high and dry. John Armstrong in the New Zealand Herald wrote a very thoughtful piece, I think, on this whole thing, albeit from a a fairly strong National Party centrist bias, I felt. But um, what he was saying there and arguing was if the government does not go ahead with its asset sale plan, well, then it's got itself into a fiscal hole, that there are big holes in its capital expenditures um, and that it will be in a position where it has to make hard decisions on how much financial contribution it makes to the health and education sectors. So it's getting into real big issues here for the national government. It, it, it put it on the line as far as partial asset sales in the election. We all know that. Um, it built its, um, its first budget post-election on the premise that it was going to sell them and get a return of so many billion dollars. Now, the problem with that whole thing is this, like we all know, this whole equation of demand and what we get for the price of things, so supply and demand type equation. And when you've got question marks around, for example, Mighty River Power and whether or not there are going to be complicated legal issues that bleed on and on and on in the future, well, that question mark over that undermines the potential return the government can get when it floats them on the share market. Likewise with these others, um, Meridian Energy, there's there's doubt around the Rio Tinto contract with Meridian Energy, so there's a question mark there. There are question marks over Air New Zealand sales, shares trading low. These are all in the New Zealand Herald this morning, all making reference to this. Now all those question marks take arguably billions of dollars off their potential price that they calculated their budget on and that's serious serious um, problems for the government right now Simon. Now I think if you yeah if you do uh, decide to take uh, a government public these are the risks you take um, and then the fact you know you wind up basically devalue, devaluing uh, all these services. Um, all right well Selwyn thank you very much for your time this week of course You're we'll welcome. be uh, back in touch next week and um, take care. Okay see you soon bye bye. You're on 95 BFM, it's uh, 33 past the hour. I'm Simon, your host here until 1. Now, we have actually, uh, 